Tig here again. On the 7th of August, 2025, OpenAI released their GPT-5 model. They claimed that it's their smartest, fastest, and most useful model yet. Though many critics are saying updates are overhyped and the tool is frustrating to use as it doesn't allow users to select their preferred model. Sure, these conversations are interesting, but there's one question I haven't seen answered yet. Can GPT-5 bypass the Turnitin AI detector? The last meaningful update to Turnitin's English AI detector was July 2024. Over a year ago, GPT-5 is a new model, so maybe text produced by it will get 0% AI scores. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. In this video, you'll learn whether GPT-5 text can bypass the Turnitin AI detector and how good GPT-5 is at writing university-style essays. But first, if you appreciate this channel's work, like the video, subscribe, and share this video with anyone who you think could help or inform. Leave a comment if you have a question for me. I reply to everyone. I I barely receive a cent from this channel because I refuse to use affiliate links or make paid promotional videos. I'm not out to trick students. I provide high quality, credible and authoritative information. I work at a university in the UK, have published on AI in higher education and instruct my colleagues and students how they can use this tool effectively and ethically. Showing your support costs you nothing and will encourage me to continue making videos. Videos. Let's head over to ChatGPT. We're going to ask for a 1,500 word essay on ChatGPT 5 and its implications for students and universities. We want the essay to be written in an academic style and with in-text citations and a reference list in the APA style. The essay should be written in UK English. I used to say look at ChatGPT go here, but it doesn't go anymore. Instead, you have to do the scrolling yourself to see the new text that it produces. And yes, I know I'm using GPT-5. We'll paste the 1,365 word essay into this document here. Next, we'll upload the essay to turn it in to check the plagiarism and AI scores. The plagiarism score is 14%, which isn't a problem as two of the sources account for 3%, 3 42%, and the remainder are all 1% or less. Much of the flagged text comes from the reference list. Not a problem. The AI score is unknown percent. You can see the asterisk where the percentage should be. This is a feature that was added to the Turnitin AI detector during the most recent July 2024 update, where if the AI score is between one and 19%, the detector doesn't specify a score or show which parts were flagged to avoid false positives or erroneously flagging human written text. I wonder if the only reason we got this somewhere between 1 and 19% AI score is because the essay is written in UK English. We've seen in previous videos on the channel that we get lower AI scores when we use UK English instead of American spelling, as Turnitin's model detects statistically probable patterns of words and the UK spelling appears to disrupt this. Let's ask ChatGPT to rewrite the essay in American English this time. We'll paste the 1,365 word version of the essay, hey, it's the exact same length. Good job from GPT-5. It didn't make it any longer or shorter, meaning that it most likely changed a few S's to Z's. We'll check out the quality of the essay later in the video. We upload the US English version of the essay to turn it in and get a 15% plagiarism score, slightly higher than the last time, so it's not a problem again. The AI detector is on a go slow today. Normally the AI report is ready immediately. It takes about 10 minutes until the report is ready on this occasion and we can see that we get an unknown AI score again. So it wasn't just the style of English that determined the AI score, but does that mean that all work produced by GPT-5 can get AI scores below 20%? Let's find out. Next, let's ask GPT-5 to write the most basic, the most boring, the most played out essay that a student could ever be asked to write in a business school. A 1000 word essay on SWOT analysis and its role in forming strategic decisions. If this could get an AI score below 20%, then we're onto something. We'll paste the 1163 word essay on SWOT. Hey, that's longer than the permitted word count. 
into this document here. Even without the reference list, the word count is over 1000. We upload the SWAT essay to turn it in. We get a 29% plagiarism score this time. It's not a problem though. Parts of the body that were flagged are very generic, and there isn't any strong evidence that other work was copied. We have to give the AI detector a bit longer than usual again, but this time we get a 59% AI score. The turned it in AI detector does much better with long form prose than it does with numbered or bulleted lists. Totally missed this bulleted list, detailing the components of SWOT analysis. I wonder what would happen if we asked GPT-5 to rewrite the essay in long form prose and checked the AI score then. Let's do it. The long form prose rewrite of the essay is 1360 words including the reference list and 1238 words excluding the reference list. We've got a 25% plagiarism score, but looking at the individual flagged parts, we can see that this is not an issue. The AI detector is still on a go slow, but when we can access the AI report, we see that the essay has a 100% likely AI score. GPT-5 cannot beat the Turnitin AI detector. For fun, let's see how these four documents perform against the Originality AI detector. If they earn a low score with the Light AI detector, we'll test them again using the more sensitive Turbo AI detector. For the UK English essay, we get a 72% likely AI score with the Light AI detector. For the US English version, we got a 100% likely AI score with the light AI detector. The SWAT essay gets a 100% likely AI score with the light AI detector. And the long form prose version of the essay gets a 100% likely AI score. No need to test any of these documents using Turbo. Now we're going to evaluate the quality of the essays. And I'll make some conclusions at the end. I hope you'll stick around for that. Whether you are or whether you aren't, you can like this video at any time. How about now? You can also hit subscribe at any time. How about now? Thank you for your support. Viewers, please note, you can read all the documents that I generate and evaluate in this video by following the link in the description. First, we're going to check out the quality of the first ChatGPT5 essay. A big issue with AI essays are fake or hallucinated citations. Let's see if the references used to support the claims and statements in this essay are correct. The first source is American Psychological Association, though there is a named author, Charlotte Huff. Usually if the author is named, this would be used. We'll highlight this in yellow as the source exists, but it isn't cited 100% correctly. If a source has a DOI or Digital Object Identifier, it's very likely to be legit. And yes, this one is. We'll highlight all citations that are real and cited correctly in green. This source is the OpenAI website. Lol, I used that earlier in this video. The next one is real and cited correctly. We've got another one that's real and cited correctly. And finally, we got a real source that is missing some necessary information. This is a genuine Reuters article, though we have to go and find the link for it ourselves. We can see that M dashes are still a feature of GPT-5 writing. I'm avoiding using these as they are so typical of AI writing. Powerful pedagogical affordances. This style of writing doesn't really seem like a student at a UK university. More M dashes. This is a good point, though it's not written like a student. It sounds like an AI to be honest. Reliance on model-generated answers without critical verification may therefore undermine epistemic judgment and the development of disciplinary skepticism. More M dashes. Even more M dashes. Overall, the essay is written to a good standard. There isn't much in the way of strong argumentation, but it does a good job of summarizing the key issues relating to AI in higher education. If this were being assessed, it would earn an excellent mark. I'm very impressed. The version with the American English spelling is just the same as the version with the UK spelling. Again, this is a decent little essay. It's not very original or exciting, but it does a good job of overviewing this topic. Now the SWAT essay. Great to see that we've got some M dashes. And more M dashes. And even more M dashes. So many M dashes. The essay is fine, it's bland, but the topic is really bland too. What about the citations that are used to support the claims and statements? First one is totally fine. 
Totally correct and accurate. We'll highlight that in green. For the second one, Gurel and Tat. Hey, this isn't in English. How the heck did the student understand what this one was saying? It doesn't even look like it's about SWOT analysis. The journal is correct, though the volume and issue and page numbers are totally wrong. If a student submitted this, we'd definitely be having a conversation about how they researched and wrote the essay. We'll highlight this in red. For the George Panagiotou source, I'd be asking how the student accessed this. It doesn't seem to be freely available online or digitally through my university's databases. The final two are fine and don't seem to be misrepresented in the essay, though why are you citing work from 1982? The final essay is the long form prose version of the SWOT essay. It's the same bland essay with a few M dashes. So what did we learn from all of that? GPT-5, the new model, seems to perform differently against the Turnitin AI detector compared to earlier models, depending on the characteristics of the work. It does a good job at producing bland work, and hallucinations and fake citations are still a thing. This is a tool with a lot of potential for increasing students' productivity or the quality of the work they produce, though they can't outsource their thinking to a chatbot. GPT-5 is not so significantly different to earlier models that it can evade originality. AI scores with this detector range from 70 to 100% with the light AI detector. I say this in almost all my videos. If you think that markers only care what your Turnitin AI score is, you are wrong. I've seen students penalized for academic misconduct with 0% Turnitin AI detector scores and thanked for providing evidence of their research and writing with 100% AI detector scores. If you stayed until the end, Thank you for your time. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions, and I'll respond as soon as I can. Please, please, please help the channel with your like, subscription, and by sharing this channel with anyone who you think it could help or inform, and I'll see you in the next video.